What's going on guys? Bengal again here. We are ranked number one. This is one of the first times we've actually seen Riverside be number one mid-season. So this is kind of cool. You see the top 25. There are other teams getting votes for that number one spot, including Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, three Big Ten schools, and then Notre Dame, who basically counts, even though they might, they maybe should be in the ACC. But, you know, we'll talk about that. I know they're not coastal, but they play in ACC in basketball, so I'm pretty sure. Anyway, a uh, little break in the fourth wall in the series right now, if you're actually watching this in real time. I haven't been uploading Riverside quite as much. Reggie Gonzalez in here at number three for the Heisman Watch. He's been playing really well. Dual threat kind of guy. Uh, just there's more relevant stuff. Every season, I get really into the draft, and I want to do draft videos for you guys. I've been a little bit behind this year. I feel like there have been way more players than usual. So you know, when I'm watching each guy, and it takes, depending on the player and the position, it takes between like three and like seven hours a player in my experience. And that's just a lot of time. So I'm trying to get all these videos out. I wanted to do a big board of some, some kind. I don't know if that's gonna end up coming out. And I'm just more draft focused but I did want to get this video out for you guys before the draft because over the next couple days and through the draft, which is on the 28th, I'm doing a live stream on this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash bangle. I'm going to be streaming the draft and there will be accompanying draft videos both before, during, and after talking about it. It's my favorite part of the NFL calendar year. And as a Giants fan, it's had to be because they've been so bad. But yes, night one will be streamed on this very channel. And that is going to be about 8 p.m. Eastern time. So be sure to be subscribed. Be sure to come Thursday night, the 28th, 8 p.m. Eastern. I should be live on this channel. I'm not the expert. Wheels should be a good time. And yeah, I'm just more draft focused right now. But we're also Riverside focused, even if it's going to take a little bit of a backseat for the next week. But I did want to get this episode out before. I'm trying to figure out how to play Eric McNeil. Because I feel like once he has his visit to Cal in week 14, he's going to commit there. Or Iowa in week 8. I think we're going to lose out. Because we're barely even in, a, or in it still. So I kind of want to get locked out. And then break the lock to jump up. I think that's a, a real thing that could happen. I'm considering that. And then Robert Jones is ready for a visit. Uh, he's almost certainly going to end up signing with us. So we'll just schedule... Him against Arizona kind of doesn't matter. And I do have recruiting points. I don't really know what to do with them. This video is sponsored by Hawthorne, who I love because they make great products that I use every single day, like shampoo, conditioner, and even when I'm not feeling lazy, take out the foaming shave gel and I clean myself up a little bit. Don't just take my word for it. Steph Curry, now one of the greatest players in NBA history, loves Hawthorne, can't live without their body wash, and new New York Giants quarterback fighting for a starting job, Tyrod Taylor, used Hawthorne in the offseason and completely revamped his grooming game. It really couldn't be easier to get set up on Hawthorne either. Just go to the link in the description. It's hawthorne.co. You click the top left to take the quiz. They'll ask you simple questions like what's your hair type? For me, I would probably go with straight. And even if you know nothing about fragrances or colognes, trust me, Hawthorne knows a ton about them. Just click your level, I'm probably clueless, and that's gonna really help them out to decide what's gonna be best for you. They'll personalize your routine from over 100 formulas, so many different combinations, and come up with a bunch of different packages suited especially for you, with colognes, body wash, shampoo, conditioner, shave gels, deodorant. You can even get great pomade as well. It's down here, that water-based hydrating pomade. Can't recommend it highly enough. So get these essential items. Click the link in the description down below. It's hawthorne.co, H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E. And with code BANGLE10, you can get yourself a 10% discount. Again, that's hawthorne.co. I can add a couple Bengal guys 10 to the board. For 10 off. I think we looked at him before. There's just... Well, we've had a really good class so far. There's not really a ton of players I'm super interested in. Well, we'll check these guys out. So Clay London's going to be bad. Brian Garrett is going to be bad. Wesley Guillory isn't great, but we could use depth at the position maybe. Don't like Todd Hunter. Evan Strickland, pretty bad. <laughs> Hoping that we get a gem somewhere in here. Derek Foster's okay. William Thompson is pretty good. 
He's good at tackling block shed. Not really that fun of a player, but looks decent. We'll stay on the prowl and pop into this game against Oregon. They are an 88 overall, ranked number 20 in the nation. And you guys know, it's always tough to go on the road and get these wins. We're gonna do the best we can. And hopefully that means we keep our number one spot. This is a pretty important game. I don't know if you guys can hear how loud this Outson Stadium crowd is, but they are fired up, ready to go, and we are off and underway. It's a good looking stadium, gotta give it to them. I believe this is our first time playing here as it was our first season in the Pac-12 last year. And of course we hosted them. So I don't believe we've ever been on the road. Oregon's got some crazy uniforms and we know they're gonna be a tough team. We've seen their ratings. We know some of their best players and they're ranked top 20 for a reason as Justin Stevens can't wrap up. Running back looking for space, Joseph Brown makes a nice tackle but Dante Madsen picks up 14. Could have been a lot more. Thankfully, Joseph Brown dragged him down. Yeah, it is loud in this stadium. Oregon trying to get their way down the field. A lot of runs and Madsen gonna lose four. That might quiet down that crowd a little bit. Willie Holland's nice tackle for loss. He, I, don't, I guess, all right. Second and 14, tight end Sparks is in motion. It's gonna be a run, it's gonna be an option play. Lumpkin throws a big stiff arm. Kyle Smith kind of got scorpion, but he had a little bit of help. Bobby Anderson makes that really nice tackle. But oh my goodness, Kyle Smith ate one in the mouth. Third and 16, a promising drive is starting to stall for Oregon. And they are just going to check down. Clint Black going to force him out of bounds just shy of midfield. And on 4th and 11, the booze rain down here in Oregon. Makes sense in the Pacific Northwest. Get a little bit of precipitation per year. Quite a lot. And they will punt. Here's Adam Daniel. Last game. Left with a concussion. One for two. 36 yards passing. No touchdowns. We'll look to change that today. And uh, we saw what could be the future of this program. So I'm excited about that. But obviously Adam Daniel's still the guy. Safety's rotating over. What are they doing here? We got to throw quickly. It's Barrett Reed. Nice catch. And a first down for the Royals. You had this great running back in Reggie Gonzalez, but you guys know he's a lot more than that. So even though we're a pass first team, we want to look to run the ball a little bit. This time, can't do anything. Joe Washington makes a tackle. Just got a, a random flashback to Tony Washington. I believe a defensive lineman for Oregon that had a scoop and score in the national championship against Florida State. You guys remember that? It is third and nine though. Defense has been fairly suffocating so far. Look to move the chains, of course. And we're just going to check down to Gonzalez. I thought that was our best chance to pick it up. And it's going to be fourth and very manageable. Fourth and one. Good stop by Oregon, right? But we're obviously not punting in this spot. Dude, this stadium is electric. It is loud. They're riled up. Fourth and one. Maybe the biggest down of the game so far. Nobody's jumping. Daniel can't even get it off. Phil Triplett open. Tried to throw it to him. He just held on to the ball. Bowman unblocked off the edge. Never got picked up. And Daniel just couldn't find Phil Triplett. We needed one yard. Didn't trust the run after the Reggie Gonzalez loss earlier. And Oregon going to take over. Good play from their defense. Daniel's got to have a little bit of a quicker release than that. As Steven's trying to cover this screen. That'll do the job, but it looks like he might have a tough time tackling today. It's an option play. Stevens in pursuit. Ball came loose. Willie Hollins is on it. Crowd stunned silence. Did that football really come out? Are they going to take another look at it? They are. That does not bode well if the booth initiates the review. I think that left knee came down. Tim Washington in there, kind of tried to get that ball moving. But I think that left knee came down first. I think this is going to stay Oregon football. It is reversed. Oregon keeps possession. Good stop nonetheless. Third and 10. They're not in field goal range yet. We're only going three down linemen. And that's going to be nearly intercepted by Tim Washington. Got hands on it. 
That could have been going back the other way. And Oregon will punt. Oh my goodness, from this field positioning? I guess you have to, right? But it's a tough fourth and 10, no doubt about it. And that's going to be a 20-yard net gain, I think, from the 40 to the 20. <laughs> oh my god, sacked again. We're just holding on to the ball too long, man. Ryan Foster this time gets in there. Drop back. Ball's got to come out faster on slants. Just didn't feel like we had it. But you can see Daniel trying to throw it. But he just doesn't let go of the football. Riverside offense is struggling early. And oh my goodness, Daniel on the move. Lobbing it up. Underthrown and nearly intercepted. Uh, that play had disaster written all over it. And then it looked like it was going to be magical. We had a crosser coming open. I didn't end up throwing it. This Oregon defense has been a little bit tough for me in the early going here. I think we're just going to take the yards and, and punt. I know that seems like a stupid decision, but we're backed up pretty far. Don't want to take another sack. We'll just try and, uh, and reverse the field here and, and see uh, if Oregon's offense can do anything. Need a good bounce here. We're not going to get it. We're not going to get it. Big hit by Clint Black, but that's a big return. We've seen really good bounces on those style of punts. Didn't get it this time. Not at all. Very defensive game so far. We definitely have to clean up some things on offense. Stevens got pancaked. Clemens can't make the tackle. Brown ran past him. Touchdown, Ducks. I don't know how we didn't get anything there, dude. Oh, brutal. Could have broken the tackles anyway, or anyway, but we just didn't even get the uh, the chance. Oregon on the board first, seven nothing here at home. Good pancakes, triplet out in the open field. Good return. Seven Nation Army playing too, dude. This is this is a real game experience. If we're gonna get out with Daniel, throw across body, finding Luke Tucker. Luke, 32 yard catch. We're getting a little bit crazy, but I think we have to try and live outside of the play because it, within the construct of the play, we've been unsuccessful so far for one reason or another. I'm sure that a lot of it is me, but sometimes if we gotta live crazily, that's what has to happen. There's not a whole lot wrong with living dangerously if it works out. And we're under pressure again. Daniel escaping up the middle. Gonna slide first down. Yeah, we're living dangerously. I get it. But it's working for right now. This is our most successful drive of the game. I just, I don't like any of these quick passes. I don't love them. There we go. There's Reggie. Gonzalez breaks a tackle. Fighting for the end zone. Gonna be just shy. Jumbo. Couple tight ends in. 13 personnel. We have three tight ends. Running the ball. Gonzalez back up the middle. Ball dozes a duck. It's hunting season. Touchdown, Reggie Gonzalez. Just completely. Uh, he wasn't even ready for that contact. Gonzalez just being mean. Lowers the shoulder. They had conceded the touchdown by that point. And he just drove him down into the earth. As Florida State trying to upset Miami in a battle of north versus south here in Florida. Tallahassee versus the U. Miami going up and looking like they might be upset. That's no good. He's out in the open field, trying to save a touchdown. Eventually we do, but that's a 61 yard return by Oregon, who has basically had all of their possessions starting on our side of the field. Not a good way to live if you're the Royals but we only allowed seven so far to check down what are you gonna do Lumpkin trying to run he takes a shot finally Phil Walker does something we've seen him so much in previous years been very quiet this season that's a nice play Oregon 0 for 2 on third downs today coming out of a, a type of pistol. Lumpkin steps up, tries to throw, and incomplete, but there's a flag. I want to say he was well over the line at the time of the release. What are they calling here? Offensive pass interference. 
Yeah, we're going to decline that and give them fourth and seven. I don't think they're in field goal range. We don't want to risk them getting it on third and long. They are going to try a field goal, but I think this is the right call either way. It's going to be about a 51-yarder. This is no gimme. Here is the kick. It is drifting right and wide right it is. Missed field goal, and the Royals will take over. A little read option. Gonzalez will keep looking for space. Took a shot. Only gets two. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. Interesting game. Back and forth in some ways, but a lot of punts back and forth. And turnover maybe in there. Turnover on downs. Sets up second and eight now. Throw back across. It's Justin Bennett who gets five. Third and three. I really do love Barrett Reed on this, but it's a screen. It was never going to anybody but Reggie Gonzalez. He's got blockers out in front. Gonzalez into the open field. One man to beat. Foot race. Gonzalez wins it. Touchdown, Riverside. 59-yard touchdown. That's the home run ability of Reggie Gonzalez. Oregon is silent. 14-7. We take the lead. Great blocks getting out in front. Making that play happen. I didn't know if Reggie was going to win that foot race. 24 from Oregon. Had some pretty incredible speed. Trying to save that touchdown. But he dove. Didn't get him. And we go up by a score. Lumpkin going to try and run. He's looking for space. Steven smacked him. I think he's going to get the sack. Willie Hollins was there as well. They actually end up crediting him. Let's take another look at this. Lumpkin just kind of panicked in the clean pocket. Looked for space. Stevens, I want to say, hit him first. Maybe they... Yeah, Stevens probably got contact first. Hollins brought him down in the end. Uh, but he definitely took a shot. Going to be an option of sorts. Willie Hollins finds Lance Lumpkin again. Third tackle for loss. Lumpkin just taking some lumps here early. Only three down linemen again, but it's second and 13. They are going to try and run, but we have the outside contained. Bobby Anderson, nice tackle. Second tackle for loss for him, and it's third and very long for Oregon. We're going to play fairly conservative here and just really try to keep them in front of us. It's going to be a screen. They got blockers. Madsen had to go through Bobby Anderson, but he couldn't. Anderson might be the surest tackler on this team out of nowhere. Oregon will punt. Obviously, we want to capitalize the points off turnovers, and a punt, you know, pretty much counts. But I still, I want to be aggressive now and really try and drive down the field. Just one big play over the top to set us up. Had to take the check down there, which is too open. But if we get some speed over the top, Luke Tucker one-on-one, -on -one, we have time to make this throw. Would love to do it. I mean, Bobby, or no, uh, Barrett Reed, not Bobby Reed, uh, Barrett Reed up the seam as well, maybe taking the safety. They're blitzing. We're going to have to get out earlier than anticipated. Daniel's going to be on the run. Daniel to the sideline is pushed out of bounds after 16. Do I really want Blake Hayford getting the sweep here? We're going to go ahead and get out of this. Maybe try to beat them through the air. Gonzalez wide open. Reggie Gonzalez is just too good. Can't cover him out of the backfield that quickly. And then he just gets the yards after the catch. Third and one, got a run, has to be a run here. Daniel will keep it, and Daniel will barely get it. I mean, it could be. We've been picked off in this spot before. Let's go ahead and get out of that. I don't like the help they have on the edge. I'd love to just hand this off. It's exactly what we're going to do. Gonzalez trying to fight for it. Going to be just shy of the touchdown again. 13 personnel, three tight ends on the field. Here's third and one pitch. Gonzalez will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, his second of the game. It's going to be 21 to 7, Riverside, pending the extra point. And Reggie saying, Feed me. Keep giving me the ball. And that is actually Reggie Gonzalez's third total touchdown of the game. Lumpkin on the move. Coles, you got to know it. Eric Coles just doing a little bit too much watching. Eyes got to be on a quarterback in the spot drop there you you got to know he's taken off you got to make that play now what a throw ben rivero makes the catch first time we've seen his name pop up today only 47 seconds remain in this first half it's gonna be a run stevens nice help 
Now, Oregon calls a timeout after that, but you wonder, do they just not feel comfortable being able to move the ball through the air? Running has been so successful. And we have our light package in with Justin Stevens. We're not exactly built to stop the run in this, but you just kind of expect them to pass in some of these spots as Lumpkin will break the sack. That was Clint Black off the edge, who looks injured, by the way. Justin Stevens ends up making that play. Good help, but Clint Black, as you can see, number three, looking a bit shaken up. He might be injured, and he's still gonna be on the field. We're gonna go ahead and call a timeout for him. Don't want somebody injured on the field. I know we give him a bit more time, but we don't wanna allow the touchdown, as Lumpkin will get sacked. That's Terrence Brown. Actually, they're gonna call it a zero yard gain. That's a little BS. Third and goal. Lumpkin on the move again, and he is sacked this time! Terrence Brown gets credit for it. Nice play. And Clint Black has a strained shoulder, and this is going to be likely the last play of the first half. Field goal is up and good as time expires. We are up by 11. Good first half. We got off to a slow start. Offense is still struggling, I'd say a little bit. Our defense has, uh, has played really, really well. And our offense has had them in some pretty bad spots, pretty bad positions. But I think we've done a really good job to fight through that and really put ourselves in a pretty good position up over Oregon on the road. The crowd has been loud. Not quite as loud as the boisterous, raucous crowd of the newly renovated Carrier Dome, which is now not even called that anymore, by the way, which is BS. Got bought by somebody else. I don't even know. It'll always be the newly renovated Carrier Dome to me. But we'll start with the ball here in this second half. Kick is off, and we are underway. Third quarter, Phil Triplett set us up nicely with the return. It's not too bad. Crowd trying to get Oregon back into it. I think once you see Reggie Gonzalez, you're going to be out of it in a second. How do we not break through that tackle, Reggie? That's one-on-one. -on -one. We got to win. We had good blocks down the field as well. But I'm not sure if you saw that stat line there. And some of them are short yardage gains, but Gonzalez is only averaging like... 2.3 yards per carry, I think it was. Is Blake Hafer going to drop a first down? Try another counter run. It's third and three. Decent enough blocks. There we go. Oh, Reggie just juked right into one. I thought we had that sealed. Receiver just let him back in. Third and five. They had the screen and then they didn't, but the timing of it worked so badly. It's really frustrating. I think we will end up punting. Uh, I hate to do this, but... I, I really thought that play was going to work a lot differently. But the initial timing kind of got screwed up. But this is a really good punt. It's a shame they have a chance to return this. Because that, that's maybe a foot away from being unreturnable. Non-returnable. Oh my goodness, this running back. Multiple broken tackles. Steven's got pancaked right away. They're still running the ball. That's the thing that's so bizarre is I want Stevens on the field because he's so fast and should be a monster in defending the pass, but they just keep running the football. Eric Coles makes a nice tackle this time. This is a team that's just committed to the run, clearly. He's going to run. Stevens in pursuit. Can't make the tackle. In way to knock him back at least, but we gotta we gotta wrap up the QB in these one-on-one -on -one spots. 0 for 5 on third down though for the Ducks. Our defense has played really well. Gonna check down. Lumpkin looking like he might be on the move. Eventually checks down. Madsen gets it. Uh, very chaotic there. Tried to go ahead and make a play, but couldn't quite get there. And uh, there's no way on fourth and two. Down 11, you punt here. I, you just can't from this field positioning. I know I just punted from a similar spot, but we have a lead. I trust the defense, and it was a little bit longer. On fourth and two, you just, you got to try and get that. Working off play action. This might be time for a deep shot. That safety came up. We're airing it out. Luke Tucker down the field. Tucker can't make the catch. That's a shot I'm comfortable with, though. Even if that ends up getting picked off. Would have been annoyed, but I'm comfortable at least with the shot. Third and 10. Kind of annoying we haven't been able to move the ball. That's an unbelievable play by the DB. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. 
I thought we had plenty of separation. I mean, this is this is the right throw. It has to be. This DB came flying. That that really is an incredible play. Here's the punt. Fair catch called for. We just don't have the leg with the punter, man. Not yet. He's too young. Just a freshman is Grant Moses. With 92 speed. Wasn't going to fake anything there. I still don't think we faked anything. Just haven't had the spot. It's not something you want to overuse. This is going to be a pitch out. Joseph Brown. Nice tackle in space. Open field tackle to bring down Madsen, who's been so troublesome to tackle today. This is a beautiful play. I'll tell you confidently that the open field tackle is by far the most underrated play in football. It's so beautiful. We got a good one there. Bobby Anderson. He's just too good. Bobby Anderson doesn't miss tackles. Third tackle for loss of the game. Why is he a monster? Third and 17. I might try to get a little bit of depth with Stevens here. We're going to crash down. Lumpkin in pursuit. And we'll get... A yard? Yeah, I said he was in pursuit. We had uh, Marcus Kerr in pursuit of Lumpkin. And they will end up punting the ball. Right move in this spot. Yeah, their offense has been abysmal, but I think that could be a credit to our defense. A ref going to return this one? Oh, don't bounce like that. Thank you. <laughs> Second and seven. Luke Tucker won right away. We're going to step up here with Adam Daniel, though. Juking back inside, getting a block, getting outside. Daniel breaks a tackle. And fumbled, but out of bounds. Got a little bit crazy there. But that was a really, really fun play. I thought about throwing the streak to Luke Tucker. It was a design swing to Reggie Gonzalez, but we just stepped up and made it all happen with his legs. Pretty sweet play. Trips right. Working off play action. Got to throw that quick to Barrett Reed. Reed gets the first down. A little bit more. Mid-screen action. Going to work way better this time. This is what I wanted earlier. Just didn't work on that third down. But Justin Bennett goes ahead and picks up nine. Ooh, Kevin Mitchell in the game. We're going to keep it on the ground anyway. Read option. Daniel keeps it. He'll break a tackle and just get out of bounds. But he's tackled out of bounds. He's well out of bounds when contact's made. We need a flag. Kevin Mitchell actually stays in the game. If you guys didn't know Kevin Mitchell, true freshman, Really high rated recruit, five stars, six foot five, can play corner, can play receiver. Want to develop him into being a two way player, and we're going to get him the ball here. Kevin Mitchell looking explosive, breaks a tackle, gets 14. He looked fast as anything. First and goal, love this mismatch. Quick throw, Kevin Mitchell, touchdown on the slant. The true freshman with his first career touchdown comes on offense. And he's just, he's just too big of a mismatch. I don't know what the real goal will end up being about his usage. We have so much depth at receiver, but it feels ridiculous not to play a six foot five speed demon on offense at times. I mean, how do we not? But the thing ends up being Kevin Mitchell is so good as a corner and having a corner that's six five I feel like brings us immeasurable value. You're just not going to be able to throw at him because you're not going to be able to get the ball over him in nearly any scenario. So all the re big receivers, six foot two, six three, six four, six five, even higher than that in very rare instances, it's not really a mismatch with Kevin Mitchell on the field. And it's not like, oh, he's just this big dude. He can't run at all. He runs extremely well. Justin Stevens, big, big hit on Lance Lumpkin. I mean, that was a monster shot. Disrupted my train of thought. But yeah, Kevin Mitchell, we don't ever have him in any mismatch scenario because he's so fast. He's agile. He is a rare, rare player. As that ball is going to come out, recovered by Oregon. I'm not even sure if that was a fumble. They're going to call it one. I don't know if he ever had possession. But this Oregon offense is just getting shut down now. It is uh, clearly game over for him, but... Yeah, it's clearly not a fumble. They're going to review it for no reason. Here is the punt to Phil Triplett. And we'll see if he can do anything. Not that it matters a whole lot at this point. Game's not over yet. It's only an 18-point lead. That's significant, but it's not like, you know, easy game over. That's just a mistake or two from the offense, and they could be back in it. But they just can't score, so I'm really... 
Not too worried about it, as Reggie will get it. He'll make a move, looking to get outside. Gonzalez still going. Could have been way better, but I can't complain about the 20. Just wish, wish it would have ended up being a touchdown. Just couldn't quite get outside. That is the end of the third quarter. Riverside up 28 to 10. You know it well. And yeah, that was a really nice play they just showed. Throwing back across the field. Luke Tucker can't make the catch in traffic. It's always so dangerous to throw late across the middle of the field. You say, or they say never to do that and for good reason, but we're getting a little bit creative, a little bit crazy. It's not creative to do that. We just ran out of the pocket. <laughs> that would have been nice. I think with another score, we might look to take Adam Daniel out of the game. Just for the sake of keeping him healthy. Like 35 to 10 isn't a major blowout, but it might just be best to err on the side of caution. Kevin Mitchell back in the game. Third and eight. We're throwing Corey Warren, end zone, got him. Beautiful ball from Adam Daniel. Warren beat press, but then you had to worry about the safety. But safety took a false step in. Daniel released the ball at that perfect opportunity. And Warren got more than the one foot required in bounds. Easy touchdown. And that is 35 to 10 Riverside. And Adam Daniel is very much back. Tough to pick an MVP in this game. Reggie Gonzalez has been great. Adam Daniels, I, I think, been quite good as well. And you can see our offense has been way better. We have had a lot more plays, but that's because Oregon can't stay on the field. Lumpkin on the move. Uh, Clint Black. Why are we whiffing down? It's... Uh, ooh, Kevin Mitchell in the game on defense now. I mean, look how big he is, dude. That's a big receiver in the slot. And he just kind of dwarfs him. Lumpkin going to be on the move. Stevens in pursuit. Stevens will drag him down, but he gets five. Quick throw outside. Why do we not get the interception animation? Holding triangle does nothing in this game. That's got to be a pick, dude. I mean, it just has to be. It can never be a catch. It's just they run by the ball. They run by the guy. That's my biggest problem with this game is, like, there's no... Nobody locks on to anything. Oregon 0 for 7 on third down. And keep in mind, they've had they've had really good field positioning the entire game to start these drives and have not been able to capitalize as Lumpkin again meets a similar fate that he's met the entire game. And that's finding Willie Hollins in the backfield. The boo's really coming down now. This Outson Stadium crowd cannot believe what they're watching. But it's just like switch the Riverside logo for Utah and it's real life. Try to screen, not going anywhere. Turnover on downs. Oregon pretty much all but lost this. As the new starting quarterback, it's not starting, but the new quarterback in the game is Greg Hunt. Of course, you guys know him well. He was a four-star quarterback recruit, true freshman this year. Saw him play a little bit last game in the wake of the injury. And Reggie Gonzalez is not gonna be injured at this point in the game, dude. Ugh. I didn't take him out because I, you know, there was no need. He's had 10 touches. He's going to stay healthy, but no. We can't have nice things. Getting out with Greg Hunt. We'll take shots with him all day. He's a freshman. Who cares? Oh, Gonzalez with back spasms. All right. Nothing too serious on that front. Hunt down the middle of the field. Terrace. Andy Harris is stiff arming. Picks up 51. Just wide open, no safety help over the middle. Greg Hunt's first pass goes for 50 plus. And yeah, Gonzalez is out, Triplet is in. Little screen, Corey Warren gets it. Nice nine yard catch and run on the screen. Second and one for Riverside, still trying to march down the field. Quick throw to Mitchell. Kevin Mitchell gets six, is just shy of his second touchdown. And we have such a size advantage there. Snap the ball. Looking for options, it's Kevin Mitchell. He's just sitting there. Second touchdown of the game for Kevin Mitchell. And Greg Hunt coming in, did not take long for him to score. Worked down the field very quickly. Wow, Purdue is upset number three, Iowa. They were getting first place votes, not anymore. Huge upset. Oregon is really calling timeouts right now. 
It's 42 to 10 with a minute to go. What do you think is going to happen? What's the best case scenario? Unbelievable. This Madsen's done pretty well today, though. 15 for 110. Having quite a good game. But this offense just never really got any rhythm. Quick screen. Somehow that's completed. Third and three. Just over 20 seconds to play. One for nine on third down now. Lumpkin gonna get sacked. Is that Phil Walker again? Phil Walker's second sack of the game. It's fourth and ten. Clock ticking down. Oregon might get one more snap in here. Hopefully it's only one more snap. Five seconds to go. Here it is. It's a check down. And it's a big hit by Justin Stevens, but there is a second left on the clock. So that is your ball game. Yeah, I don't know how you can do this, Daniel, with the rest of the team comparison. Did fairly well. Beat a top 25 team. Love that. Uh, did fumble into the end zone on the final play. We backed up a little bit too far, and uh, Oregon did get a touchdown. <laughs> I'm not showing you. I don't have to. I don't have to show you anything. 42-17 is your final. Uh, we got going a little bit. First quarter was a little rough. Offense wasn't as productive as I would have wanted the entire game. But all in all, we played great. Our defense is just suffocating. Greg Hunt ends up 4 for 4, 67 yards and a touchdown. Was sacked, did fumble. It was a touchdown. But Adam Daniel, 23 for 31, 243 and 3 touchdowns. I think he was great also. I just played a lot more, right, and got sacked a couple times. Rushing, Adam Daniel kind of led the way. Did fumble. Greg Hunt with that fumble too. Uh, Reggie Gonzalez, though, two touchdowns on the ground. 53 yards rushing overall. And was also pretty good as a receiver. Four catches for 87 yards and a touchdown. Two touchdowns for Kevin Mitchell. Kind of unbelievable. And a touchdown for Corey Warren. Weird stat lines per usual from the offense, but that's just kind of the way she goes. And then we had a lot of tackles for loss. Willie Hollins had four. Three for Bobby Anderson and Phil Walker. Two for Stevens and Terrence Brown. We saw two sacks from Phil Walker, too, along with a sack for Terrence Brown, Willie Hollins, and Justin Stevens. Of course, no picks. Deflection by Tim Washington, which we can just call a dropped interception. Now, I'm curious as to where this is going to put Reggie Gonzalez on the Heisman watch. You'd think it would have to move him up, but we will see. And also, I don't really know what to do with these recruiting points. I pretty much have 700 on everyone that I want and I'm able to put points on. I guess I'll add 550 to Daniel Smith. I don't even really want him. <laughs> In week eight, we play UCLA. Should be pretty interesting. Of course, we stay ranked number one at 6-0. and And the Heisman watch, Gonzalez is staying put, unfortunately. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, this dude had 317 yards passing, five touchdowns. 67 yards in the ground. Keenan Campbell of Notre Dame. And four total touchdowns for Lauren Ford. I guess it makes sense why Reggie stays where he does. But he is the best player in the country. These other guys, not much. See, do I just, do we drop out of the Eric McNeil sweepstakes to use the lock break to get closer? I might try that bold strategy. It's it's going to be bold, but we're, I, I might try it. <laughs> But guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Riverside Dynasty. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.